Well, we not only bless the blesser when we say thank you, but also, secondly, we bless the blesser when we treat our M&Ms as a gift from God. Now, when I say M&Ms, I'm not just talking about candy, okay? That candy's a little object lesson this morning. I'm talking about uh, M&M's of another sort, all right? Uh, M&M's stand for money and material goods. And uh, when we treat those money and material goods as a gift from God, it changes our life. And uh, some of you have a pretty big pile of M&M's at your house. I'm not talking about candy. Others have just a little. But all of us have some, right? And so, do you know what God sometimes does? He sometimes asks us for some of our M&Ms. And He wants for us to be giver. And there are some people, when God asks them for M&Ms, what He does, thank you, sir, appreciate it. What, what He does, what we do, it's, uh, some people react like my little boy did. And say, uh-uh, no, these are mine. But, but let me tell you, if you're doing that with God, you're failing to understand some very important stuff this morning. First of all, God's the one who gave us all the M&Ms in the first place. Come on. Secondly, he's strong enough to take them back. And thirdly, think about what he could give us beyond the M&Ms that we already have. Amen. And so we need to have that attitude of being willing to give back back to the Lord. Now I like Psalms 50 and verse number 12. God is speaking here in the first person and he says this. He says, if I were hungry. How many of you know God does not get hungry? I don't know. Maybe Jesus does. He does eat. How many of you know that? I got to think about that. Boy, you get yourself out here on a theological predicament. All right. All right. But God says, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you for the world is mine in all of its fullness. And besides, if he couldn't find enough to eat in this world, all he had to do is create another world full of what he wants. Come on. How many of you know that God doesn't need our M&Ms, so to speak, right? If, if, if God, if he says, if I were hungry, I could create anything I want to eat. So the question is, if God already has all the M&Ms, why does he want some of mine? It's because he wants to teach us how to bless him, to bless the blesser. Now, we use that word bless so much in our everyday language. You know, some sneezes and they, people say, God bless you. That's a nice thing to do, nice thing to say. And we say, how are you today? People say, oh, I'm blessed. And what does that mean, actually? You know, usually we think of kind of intangible things like love and peace and joy. And all those are the blessings of God, right? But being blessed is about being on the receiving end of both the intangible and the tangible things of God that God gives us, right? Uh, you know, we, we, we're blessed. If, if you have your health, you're blessed. Come on. Amen. If you have your health, you're blessed. If, you, if you've got some wealth, you're blessed. Our house, our car, all the other money and material goods of life. In fact, Americans have the most, we're the most blessed people in, on, on earth, I believe, and in the history of, of earth. But so often we forget where our blessings come from. How many know I'm preaching the truth this morning? We forget where our blessings come from. And uh, we become like that little child, you know, who just grabs his candy and thinks, you know, he forgets where he got it and where it came from. And that actually happened to the people of God in the Old Testament. Did you know that? They had been given so much but God offered them a warning in the book of Deuteronomy. This is what he says. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let me read it to you. It says, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God when you have eaten and are full. Okay, so after Thanksgiving dinner here, I want everybody to remember the Lord. All right, just sit back in your lazy chair, turn on the football game and say, Thank you, Jesus, for the food. Amen. Help your wife with the dishes first. I'm just preaching really well today. Come on. I got one fan anyhow, right? 
When you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. Look what he says. You will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and you will say in your heart, My power and my might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you should remember... The Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get well. You bless your blesser, the blesser, when you change your attitude about the M&Ms of your life. You learn that every bit of money and all your material gifts are a gift from God. You know, I drive a, I drive a nice car, live in a, a nice house, but I'm going to tell you something that's not really mine. All I am is the manager of that house. Come on. It's God's house. We need to see our money and our material possessions in that way. But you know, most people think, well, I work for it. I toil hard for it. I, it was my sweat, my toil, my labor. But I, but maybe you're not really getting it today. How many of you realize without God's energy and strength and life in you, you wouldn't be able to do that? Hello. There but for the grace of God, you could have been born in the Guajira desert of Colombia and have been a goat herder today. Hello. I've been out to the Guajira and seen the goat herders. They're hungry sometimes. But you need the Lord to help them. Amen. David said this. David built God's house in the Old Testament. And they gave a lot. How many of you know that house cost a lot? David gave a lot. The people had given a lot. Notice what it says here. 1 Chronicles 29, 14. It says, but who, David says, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? Now notice the next phrase. He says, for all things come from you. And of your own we have given you. And so in other words, what David's saying, his perspective was, look, he's like, it's all yours anyway. All we're doing is giving it back to you. Come on. We're bringing it back. And you know, a lot of people think, well, Pastor, I'd love to be a giver. I'd love to be able to give more. But you know, I just can't. I can't afford it. I live hand to mouth. Can I tell you how you live without you getting offended today? Here's how everybody in this room, in fact, everybody in the Word lives. Nobody lives hand to mouth. What we, well, actually, I know what it's like to be on a tight budget, but here's how we live. We live God's hand to our mouth. Come on. If you believe that, give the Lord a praise this morning. We live God's hand to our mouth. Amen. Amen. Now, i got a question. How many of you remember the movie The Wizard of Oz? You're showing your age. All of y'all are old people today. I'm telling you. Uh, even Ethan's an old fella today. Come on. He raised his hand. Well, the munchkins told Dorothy to go to the land of Oz. That they indicated that everything was going to be wonderful in the land of Oz. It was this land of fantasy where all of their wishes would, dreams would come true. And she would find everything she wanted in the land of Oz. And uh, today, a lot of people are living in a fantasy world like that as well. Or at least they're trying to get there, but they can't find the yellow brick road, okay? I want to call their land where they're living, not the land of Oz. I want to call it the land of Ing. The land of I-N-G, all right? How many of you are with me today? They, uh, you know, people are into these things today. They're into owning, earning, clothing, spending, Bling, bling, ka-ching, ka-ching. People are all interested in money, right? They're into getting, investing, protecting, saving, spending, hoarding. We've got all kinds of names for it today. Show me the money. We call it the scratch. El dinero, right? La plata, the bling, bling, ka-ching, ka-ching, and on and on. But let me tell you something. You're never going to get God's blessings on your material goods until you adopt the attitude that God, it's all God's anyway, and God's the one who can bless it. God's the one that can multiply it. Come on. If he multiplied the loaves and the fishes, he can do that for you. If they could go and go fishing and catch their money for taxes, come on, and the fish that they caught, God can do that for you as well. Amen. Maybe not that exact way, but I'm going to tell you, God knows how to bless his people. 
Or you say, well, what do I got to do? You got to bless the blesser. Tell your neighbor, it's time to start blessing the blesser. Hello. We got to bless the blesser. One way is to tithe. Now, y'all were preaching amen a minute ago. What happened? One ways to tithe. You say, well, how many M&Ms does God want? He gave us the exact amount. In Malachi 3, 9 and 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Notice what he says there. Test me out. Another scripture says, prove me. Another scripture says, check it out and see if you believe it. Come on. Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to contain it. Amen. I tell you something. God wants us to keep first things first we're going to slip a skip a slide up there all right and i'm going to tell you something the beautiful thing is when you give to the lord it is impossible to outgive god tell your neighbor you can't outgive god He's a bigger giver than you are. I'll just guarantee you. God will outgive you every single time. You cannot outgive him because this is what it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. You see, God's goal is to get you over into the sweet spot of his blessing. It says this, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine come on how many of you believe that you want to bless the blesser today you do that by giving to the lord now i want to tell you a little testimony today something happened to me last saturday that was quite remarkable all right uh, I was the recipient of a very nice gift. We say that tithing confession, and it talks about unexpected gifts. And Man, I got an unexpected gift. I did not expect to receive it all. According to, uh, uh, you know, Holly's husband, Judah, I, my, my expression was like, I couldn't even believe it, all right? Uh, in our family, the family I was raised in, we, we weren't much into weapons and guns and hunting and all of that, you know. But when I married into Jereen's family, I found out that, man, there, there's a whole other world out there, right? And, and, and uh, you know, but that's an expensive sport and an expensive hobby. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I mean, you could spend a lot of money out there doing that kind of stuff. And, and, and so, so uh, you know, I, had, I have been the recipient across my life of numerous gifts of guns and weapons and my grandfather gave me a german mauser when i was 14 i gave it to my oldest son dustin I, my dad gave me a 16 gauge that was his i, I gave i gave no i gave the mauser to derek i gave the shotgun to dustin all right and, and then and then a little later on in my life my, my, my brother who's a missionary had a little little pistol a 22 and he couldn't take it to the mission field so i just assumed he gave it to me he, he said keep it for me he never came back to get it i've had it for 22 years so I guess it's mine you, you possessions nine tenths of the law right and then this last Father's Day I got a hunting rifle and so there I am and one of the things that I've wanted to be a, it's part of Royal Ranger thing all right it's part of this frontier camping fellowship thing where you you know it's grown men acting like you know kids but anyway it is it is fun right but you know to really be in an FCF you need to have a black powder muzzle so that was something that was on my gonna buy list how many of you have a gonna buy list that is like you're not going to buy it this year probably not next year but sometime in the future you're going to buy that it's out there you know you want it it's going to be there one day and all of a sudden freddie bailey comes to me and he says just wait right there he goes into his little tent he brings out this beautiful weapon and he starts showing me it i'm just thinking he got a new a new a new a new toy you know and then all of a sudden he goes here it's yours Come on, I'm just here today to tell you, you cannot outgive God. Amen? God will outgive you every single time. And so I just want to give thanks and praise to the Lord because of that today. Amen.